Hello my lovelies, it's Trina and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about a collaboration of sorts produced by Ne, N-E-Z, Edition, the French uh, olfactory magazine that's published bi-annually. This is it. <laughs> there are now 12 volumes and I'm proud to own all except number five, which is sadly out of print, but hopefully it'll come back. And uh, the first two are in French, but I do read French, so eventually I might buy those at some point. Ne Edition has produced a series of collaborations between perfumers and leading figures from other creative realms. Each of the resulting olfactory creations is available as a limited edition with every new issue of the magazine. It's called the One Plus One Collection and it was developed under the direction of Jeanne Doré, who is the Ne Olfactory Magazine's editor-in-chief. There are now five perfumes to date, and if Ne publications continue, as I certainly hope they will, I believe the plan is to have a new perfume released alongside every issue. The first one appeared in number eight, and uh, there's a write-up about each perfume at the back of each publication. But if you buy only the perfume, you might get sent a separate brochure of sorts. I know this because I purchased a second bottle of Ambre à Lèvres, I liked it that much, and got this. These perfumes are superb, but indeed they are limited editions. I think the Hong Kong Oolong that I have a little bit left of here is no longer available, at least on a couple of sites. You can purchase the Ne Publications and the associated perfumes directly from their website, um, from Lucky Scent, which is where I got mine, and probably also from Tiger Lily, which I've never used because they don't ship internationally. I'll put links below. I was debating whether or not to talk about each perfume separately in different videos because each of these fragrances uh, does have a detailed story behind it, but instead I think I'll squeeze all three of these guys into today's longer video. And the main reason for that is because I'm rather desperate to use them and once I start spraying I'll easily use them up as I already did with uh, one of them as I mentioned and then they'll be gone and it's not as fun or as easy to review a perfume that only exists in your memory. So let's get started with uh, the one that started it all, which is the uh, 2020 Ambre à Lèvres by perfumer Mathilde Bijaoui, the nose behind the uh, new, newish BDK perfume called Griche Carnel, which I adore. I have to buy everything in that collection. But anyway, separate thing. She collaborated with artist and filmmaker Marjan Satrapi as her muse to bring forth a beautiful fragrance. And I'll just open this up to show you what the bottles are like. Just these little guys here. This fragrance pulls from the two's passion for scents and their childhood memories. Side note, I recommend checking out Marjan's graphic novel, Persepolis. Google it. Anyway, the name of this perfume is a dead giveaway for what smells like amber and lipstick. Well, Ambre à Lèvres is the third uh, in the series of perfumes from Ne Edition, featured in volume 10 uh, with an appropriate red lip on the front. Here are the notes. This scent opens up as a jammy, sweet amber coddled with fresh greens and roses, almost like syrupy red berries. But that tangy amber graciously applauds the lipstick brigade that follows close behind. The lipsticks of Marjan's great aunt from pre-revolutionary Tehran form the backbone of this fragrance with lots of iris and rose. It's got some powdery accords of violet and heliotrope that amp up the cosmetic vibe and bridging the lips macking florals to the amber facet which is strong in center stage, are some uh, vanillas. Absolute, absolute vanilla and um, something called pure jungle essence, whatever that is. Traces of benzoin, tonka bean, and suede accord melt onto this bridge and fix it in place. And the, there's, the suede is kind of like velvety and fuzzy, and it reminds me of something Serge Luten-esque. And there are some musky notes in there too, giving some air to all the thickness 
and adding uh, further reinforcements. Oh, this is such an evocative fragrance that I find so comforting that I decided in the middle of a very high fever to grab for my toiletry bag as I packed for hospital when I had COVID-19 last July. I chose it not only for its warm embrace, but because although this fragrance has moderate projection sillage and longevity, for some reason I find it rather powerful. And I knew, you know, based on the reports, that uh, I might lose my sense of smell and taste. And I was terrified of this, obviously, being a fume head. And I wanted something perceptible to test myself with and something in, you know, a small container. So as a fume head, yeah, I was really worried about not being able to smell anything. And sure enough, I remember that on day four or five in hospital, about two weeks after my first symptoms appeared at home, I could no longer smell anything, including this beautiful scent. Thankfully, it was gone only for a few days, I think. It came, my sense of smell came back around five days after I lost it, and uh, I could pick up the scent again. And I felt like, I felt like a loved one was in there with me in that lonely, sterile room. Of course, now this um, COVID memory is attached to this fragrance. It was not a good month, and I'm still suffering long COVID symptoms, by the way. But interestingly, when I smell this now, I just feel resilience, strength, and um, yeah, good things. It's kind of welling me up now, thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Apparently this fragrance uh, came together quickly in its creation as Marjan had a clear idea of what she was hoping for. And according to perfumer Mathilde uh, Bijawi, Marjan's personality is radiant, warm, and assertive like the matte orange red hue of her lips or the contrasting colors of her portraits of women. And this perfume is indeed that. I'm gonna be sad when it's gone. Again, darn it, I probably have to buy a third bottle. But look guys, there's so much great perfume out there to enjoy and I have limited time, space and money. Uh, this one has become special to me. Um, it stands out from all the other hamburger, hamburger, <laughs> amber fragrances out there. It's uh, it's assertive, but not in, not in like an ostentatious sort of way. And at $35 US for 15 milliliters, this and the other ne one plus one cents, I don't think they really break the bank. Okay, the next scent I have from the series is uh, Hong Kong Oolong. And yep, if you think this is going to smell like tea, you would be right. Uh, this 2019 collaboration is between prolific perfumer Maurice Roussel and Hong Kong's famous designer, Alan Chan. I believe this concoction uh, was the first scent in the one-on-one -on -one collection. Uh, it's from this one here, volume eight, yeah. And among many others, Roussel is the nose behind Frederick Malle's Musk Ravagé, uh, that apple fragrance and its flankers by DKNY. Uh, Roches Man and my favorite Bond number no. nine scent, New Harlem. And apparently, Roussel knew nothing about tea and admitted the closest thing he drank to it was whiskey, only similar to Oolong Cha in terms of the liquid coloring and the fact that it has its own distinctive aromas. But I believe Chan educated him a little about his passion. In the classic book of tea by Okakura Kazuo, I say his name in Japanese word order because he's Japanese. A man with no tea inside him is incapable of understanding truth and beauty. Well, despite the omission of woman and youth, I rather like uh, this quote. I never really began to appreciate tea before I moved to Asia, if I'm honest. Anyway, this scent is a modern take on tea, but the tea within is discernibly traditional. There are subtle spice notes in here that I would not normally associate with oolong, such as cloves, cardamom, and ginger, but they're very subtle and only serve to warm the blend. And along with a heavy dose of musk, the spices ground the fragrance and make it earthy and almost sweaty. Yeah. Oolong tea, uh, like ocha or green tea, is a type of beverage I would never consider consuming with milk, 
but perhaps due to the Western influences, you can get sweeter and creamier versions of Asian tea now. Just look at my favorite offering from my local Starbucks, which I enjoyed today. Matcha cream frappuccino, yum. But if there is milk and sugar added to this blend, it's, it's just a dash. I think the base of sandalwood and tonka are probably responsible for that milkiness. Yeah, I pick up more floral notes there that might be responsible for the sweet traces. Jasmine, definitely, which obviously goes really well, I think, with, uh, with tea. And um, yeah, here are the official notes. I admit I have no idea how the overall effect of oolong tea is created without any obvious tea itself in the mix, but if I understand correctly, it's got something to do with leather and, well, probably the mix of a few accords, actually. Perfumery is such a fantastic blend of science, art, and alchemy. I love it. I didn't originally pick up honeysuckle, or leather or incense, but it, they're there. And yes, there's like a, a vegetal freshness in the tea leaf effect. Mm, you don't need, it's great. You don't need to spray these. The, the aroma right out of the nozzle is great. It's a lovely composition. And if you're a tea fan, uh, this will not disappoint, assuming you can still get it. <laughs> okay, my final composition via Nez Edition is a collaboration between perfumer Marie Salamang and Johan Lemoyne, aka Woodkid, a musician and filmmaker you can find here on YouTube. Very soulful and cinematic music. Like Marjan Satrapi, he's an artist of many talents, actually, not just music. Uh, the collaboration is called Craft Gome, which I think refers to a type of painter's tape, perhaps the blue stuff you might have seen me in my videos used to protect my Louis Vuitton canvas when I dye the vaquette leather. Check those out. Uh, this fragrance, released in uh, 2021, to me is more... It's more of a wearable aroma than a perfume per se, if that makes sense. It reminds me in that way of By the Fireplace by Maison Martin Margiela. And uh, guess what? Yes, perhaps uh, this is not by chance because I realized after having made that association that uh, Marie Salamang is responsible for By the Fireplace too. She's also the nose behind Beachwalk. Uh, sorry about the car. Which is also a very literal fragrance. Yes, I'm liking this perfumer. Make no mistake, this is a fragrance that is highly wearable and uh, it's pretty obvious that I like this too. God, it's good. Wood Kid's memories of art school are embedded in this juice. I get pencil shavings, warm rubbers or erasers, paper, glue, varnish, melted waxes, blown out matchsticks, a wooden easel, I 100% get artist workshop out of this, one that includes a giant cedarwood table. It's very cool and dry, and yet it's kind of like pasty or sticky and humid too. I can imagine a man with uh, loose black curls and paint and nicotine stained hands sketching on some thick paper. There's loose tobacco and rolling paper on the table, and uh, the warmly lit space looks like disorganized or maybe organized chaos filled with uh, sketches, paintings, and wood carved sculptures. And there's a naked woman posing, the man's wife maybe, and I see a hint of an erection showing in the artist's overalls. Yes, this one is a smidge naughty. I don't know why, but that's, it's just sexy. Here are the notes. Okay, my lovelies, that is it for my three Nez scents. I just want to finish with some words of praise for the author of the series at the back of each volume. Uh, her name is Aurélie uh, Dematon, and she's the observing third party in the collaboration, writing backgrounds of each of the parties involved and the interactions between perfumer and muse as they collaborate to bring each perfume to life. It's been wonderful reading. And in general, if you're obsessed with perfume as I am, I highly recommend this series. Each one sells for about 30 US dollars and I think each perfume might be cheaper if you purchase them as a set. I plan to buy both the publications 
and the perfumes that I'm missing, uh, if I can get my hands on them, as well as forthcoming fragrances and uh, volumes from this project via Lucky Scent. So hopefully you'll hear more from me on the One Plus One collection in the future. Okay, bye now, darlings. Mwah! Thank you.